Hello, in this video I'll be showing you how I do my fashion illustrations, or better said, how not to do fashion illustrations. This is one of my favourite looks from Burberry's Autumn Winter 20 show. I sketched it off camera because I was rubbing out every two minutes, redrawing the face, and the rubbing would make the camera wobble and shake too much. So I did that quickly off camera. I was not happy with the outline with the sketch, but felt I, was, I should start inking. Maybe was, I can make it look good once I um, start adding the ink and the colors, which is a huge mistake. I think you should always have a good layout, a good design before you start inking or adding colors, because if you don't have a good foundation, it will just bite you in the in your backside later on which you'll see in this video but i'll show you how i try to attempt to save my mistakes so this technique um, is very akin to watercolor painting you basically wet the areas with clear water beforehand and then you add in the ink and let it just dissolve and run freely and it creates really beautiful abstract veins and layers. Um, this is a really fun technique to do when you're doing an abstract illustration or if you want to work quite quickly. However, it doesn't lend itself very well to small scale illustrating. I sadly had to use this format, which is A4 because being in lockdown, I don't have access to professional A3 or bigger scanners. All I have is my crappy A4 one in my printer. So um, I decided to do A4 for this video and filming as well. Any bigger is quite difficult to frame. Um, so yeah, here I'm adding in all the ink. This looks much better and easier when you're working on a bigger scale because you can really let the ink go run wild and free across the paper and it can when it dries it creates really interesting shading effects and patterns quite difficult to control on a small scale which is why it's good to have these little cotton buds on hand and tissue paper so you can dab off any excess ink to try and control some of that randomness that you're creating with with all the water and, and the ink just running freely. So then I go in with a smaller pence, paintbrush just to try and add some details, some curls of the hair. Again, at this stage, it doesn't look too bad, but you'll see later on once I do the face, I'm not quite happy with it. And it, I go 180 on this illustration quite quickly. I always find it quite interesting for my illustrations to give the, the model or the person an emotion or an expression on their faces. Um, because when doing a fashion illustration, I always find it important that you're adding to that look or you are trying to encapsulate or capture a mood or a feeling or a vibe or something of that appearance or of the aesthetic and um, I made a grumpy looking face um, well not necessarily grumpy she just looked ended up looking absolutely angry and mad because I illustrated on a light grey paper, I thought I could add some highlights with um, a white pencil. Here I'm trying to sharpen one of my Faber Castell polychromatics. Yeah, it didn't really work out, you'll see in a bit. Um, but this is quite good, a good technique if you're working on darker paper. Sometimes it can look really nice if you just add a very faint light highlight with a pencil or some colored pencils can create a nice effect. 
So yes, as you can see, she looks very angry, a bit too angry for my liking. I just didn't, I just wasn't feeling it. I'm not happy with this. I tried to save it by going in with more detail. Here I'm going in with one of my nibbed fountain pens. Is that how you call them? This one is an absolute nightmare. I keep having to rebuy this one every time I use it because I make the mistake of, you know, when you use them fresh out of the box, they work perfectly, but if you don't wash them and rinse them out right after use, they just don't work again anymore. So I've switched to a pen instead. And this is one of my favourite pens. I bought this pen in Tokyo. It's by the brand um, Tombow, which means dragonfly. And um, they do a huge, vi wide variety of different pens. Uh, this one I like in particular because it has a brush tip, so you can do quite a lot of fine detail. Since I'm working on grey paper, I'm also using just normal pencil to do some shading. But all this is not really improving the look very much. Um, and the reason why I chose this look in particular, just because it's quite dramatic, I like the silhouette, it had big shoulders, it had the Burberry check in it, it ticked all the boxes, it's a kind of two-in-one layered effect trench coat, or woolen trench coat with the fur, it was really, really cool. So yes, because I hated the ink painting or illustration so much, I layered this overhead projector film over the top and decided to paint over the entire thing. Instead of re-sketching the, the whole thing again, I thought I'd use the sketch of or the, the ink painting I'd already done as a base and just paint over it. Um, these overhead projector sheets I've had lying around for years. I'm an absolute hoarder when it comes to art supplies, paper, paints, anything I can use or paint on, I will keep for years and years and years, and it always comes in handy at some point. Um, with the whole lockdown situation, I was quite lucky to have all these old paint brushes and paints and paper in the garage, which I could repurpose for these illustrations that I'm doing now. So yeah, here I'm just using simple acrylic to um, yeah to add the colours, to do the face. I didn't like the illustration being just black and white because I really appreciated the colours of the actual look. The um, underlayer coat part is this really beautiful olive green and I like the browns and chestnut colours in the check outer part of the coat. So here I'm just very crudely laying down the acrylic, which I will be etching the Burberry check pattern into later on, which you'll see in a bit. Just a bit of backstory on Burberry. Burberry is a quintessentially British brand. It was founded in 1856, I believe, by Thomas Burberry. And the brand is most well known for its trench coats and its Burberry check. Thomas Burberry invented the gabardine fabric, which is um, a water repellent fabric. I own a Burberry trench coat and it's pretty amazing when you pour a glass of water or some rain falls onto it. The water pearls off the fabric like on a lotus leaf. And that's due to its weft and how it's woven. It's woven in a very particular way, like a almost like a twill twill weave, a very tight diagonal twill weave. That's the closest thing I can describe to it really. Um and yeah, it, it repels water molecules. And that came in really handy during the war. So all the soldiers in the trenches were wearing trench coats, hence the name. Um, so for expeditions and the war, 
this is where the fabric became very, very popular. And um, if you look at trench coats of this day, they still have all the war time details on them. The epaulettes, the gun flap to storm guards. Um, it's a very historic coat. So Burberry is a very historic brand. It later on also became very famous for its iconic Burberry check. And currently Ricardo Tisci is the creative director who's shaking things up at the brand and I absolutely love this look. Um, it's like a two-in-one effect. Um, and the coat is based on a Burberry trench shape and you've got these really dramatic great fur sleeves and this fur collar in this um, very shaggy shearling, uh, which is fantastic. So yeah, here I'm trying to use the colours of the coat in the face. I always like to use some of the colours in the garment in the face if that's possible. However, this face, she looks absolutely terrifying. Um, yeah, so once again, the face is an absolute mess. But I just had to stop for a while because I was, yeah, getting frustrated with the face. And this was the most fun bit, doing the black shearling parts of the coat. I, the idea is to just layer it all on quite abstract in blocks. And then later on, I'll etch the detail into it, which you'll see momentarily. Yeah, again, I just think it's so important to really have a good inspiration or, or design to begin with or an idea in your head and then you can avoid many, many steps of repainting, redoing or getting frustrated with it. Um, here I'm just adding in the smaller details with black. What I love about checks and tartans is um, you can layer all these sometimes quite ugly or unseemly colours that you wouldn't think would work together next to each other, but how they are proportioned or broken up by a check or a tartan pattern and makes the overall fabric look really interesting and really nice. So here is, yeah, I've already started etching in to the acrylic that I laid down earlier on. I'm just crudely scratching into it with the needle side of a compass and the idea here was to etch in the check pattern into the coat so you'd have the light grey of the illustration underneath shine, well, not shining through but you'd have that peering through just creating a bit more dimension and layer and etching in the fur elements of the the collar and the sleeves and because I hated the face so much I completely scratched her face away which you can see the face is pretty much gone now I'm just touching up with another one of my favorite pens that I bought in Tokyo um, this is a brush pen an absolute nightmare as it doesn't dry at all it takes a day to dry if you don't use it on paper um, but just adding a bit more fur detail, outlining some key details of the coat. Everyone's quite different with their illustrations. Some like to just capture a silhouette or very vaguely or abstractly capture the mood of a look or a garment. I always find it quite important with my illustrations to capture the details of the garment or certain key features of it. Um, because it is a fashion illustration after all. Um, so I added in the belt and the buttons. And whilst I let that dry, because as mentioned, that pen takes forever to dry, I just thought I might as well play around with the failed underneath illustration. Um, add those same details with the ink. I did more of that ink bleeding technique on the shoulders. 
Um, I just thought it could be a nice added dimension to the illustration that I'm superimposing above if I had a bit of the fur or that bleeded ink effect peering through underneath. But yeah, not my favourite. And just on my favourite pen of before, the, the two pens I mentioned, the Tombow brush pen and that other generic brush pen that I bought in Tokyo. If you ever have the chance to go, you have to go to these um, Hyaku En shops, they're called, 100 yen shops. And you can buy anything and everything there for 100 yen, which is roughly a pound, less than a pound. And the pens are brilliant. I, I love them. I should have stocked up on hundreds of them whilst I was out there or whilst you were still able to travel. I quite like this part, um, just playing around, because when you take away the seriousness, if an illustration fails, it's quite freeing. You can just start splashing paint around freely and you wouldn't be able to be this free if you were actually serious about it or you still cared about it so positive can always come with failing um yeah i hated the face so much and that inking i just did on on the shoulders with the fur that i just covered the whole lot in white acrylic and started drawing a head from memory just the new face over the top again this is another mistake i think it's always good to have a reference or to look at a model not always to necessarily copy them one to one but just so you have proportions dimensions a source of light then i did the entire face again in acrylic over the top because, yeah, I just didn't like the look of it. So I ended up with four different illustrations. I scanned each one before I made these drastic um, choices of painting over them or redoing them. And if you look on my, on my Instagram, you'll have all four versions of this illustration. I thought it was quite interesting to which people liked the most, the ones I liked the most were quite different to what was most popular online. So feel free to head over to my Instagram to have a look at all different versions of this. Um, I'll show you a few here at the end. I basically, at the end, superimposed all four illustrations on top of each other in Photoshop. So the far left one is my favourite. I feel like it encapsulates it encapsulates the details from all four. Actually, I did six illustrations in total. Um, it has the details of all of the that I like out of all of them. It has a bit of the grey background. You have the acrylic face mixed with some of the pencil still in there. You have the etching on the coat, which is quite visible still, but then also the ink outlines. The one in the middle, funnily enough, was the most popular one online, which is my least favourite. And then there are, there are a few more if you want to check them out on Instagram. But this little video was just to show that, you know, don't give up. Just persevere, keep going with an illustration. You can always layer on more. Sometimes more is more. Sometimes it can work. I'm not sure it did in this instance. It's quite a dense illustration. But it's also fun just to play around. So that's all I can encourage you to do. Again, feel free to check my Instagram for loads of other illustrations and the outcome of this one. Thanks for watching. Bye.